Hi, and welcome to How Humans Heal. I'm Dr. Donnie Wilson. And in today's episode, I want to talk about HPV virus related to fertility, pregnancy, and breastfeeding. This is actually one of the more common times of women's lives that they end up being testing positive for HPV. Now, yes, HPV virus can be positive anywhere from around age 20 to even to women in their 70s. And so I like to cover and help women at all different ages. But in particular today, I want to focus on the times of women's lives when they're working on fertility and pregnancy and breastfeeding. Because this, the reason why this is so important is one, as a naturopathic doctor and a midwife, one of my specialty areas is also helping women with getting pregnant, preventing miscarriages, supporting their health during pregnancy and while breastfeeding. And so this coincides with helping women with fertility and helping women with HPV. And a lot of times what tends to happen is women might go in for a pap smear as they're thinking about, hey, I'm getting ready for pregnancy. Let me get a, go in to see the doctor, do a pap smear, and they end up finding that they have HPV positive and potentially abnormal cells. And then what can happen is if, for example, there are more severely abnormal cells on the cervix, that's say CIN2 or CIN3, that's when the gynecologist is likely to recommend a LEAP procedure, which is a laser procedure. In the United States, we refer to it as a LEAP procedure. And this procedure is to remove the abnormal cells, the CIN2 and 3, which is important because we don't want those abnormal cells to progress. And luckily, we've been able to identify them before they became cancer cells. The issue is that when a LEAP procedure is performed, there's the risk of damage to the cervix, especially in the cases where women are having to have more than one LEAP procedure. So the important thing to understand is when we do a LEAP procedure to remove the abnormal cells, it does not kill the HPV virus. So then after the LEAP procedure, you're going to need to go back in and recheck and make sure that abnormal cells did not develop again. And if they do develop again, then the doctor will likely recommend another LEAP and or something called a cone biopsy or conization where they remove part of the cervix. And so through these procedures, repeated LEAP procedures and conization, it can cause damage or actually have to have part of the cervix removed. And when that gets to that point, then it can increase risk of miscarriage when a pregnancy occurs. And so this is, I believe, first of all, important information for women to have because your doctor might not be even explaining that to you. And a lot of times women end up finding out after they had the procedure that, oh my gosh, now it might be increasing risk of miscarriage. So I'd rather you have that information ahead of time. And to know that there's other options. And this is where a lot of women will reach out to my office, and which you're welcome to do. You can call or email my office directly from my website at drdonnie.com, D-O-C-T-O-R-D-O-N-I.com. And we can set up a time to review your case, review your results, and talk about what are alternatives in this situation. So what I'm talking about now is before you get pregnant, maybe finding out that you have abnormal cells and wondering what else can I do besides a LEAP procedure or conization. And this is one of the areas where I help a lot of women because we can, especially if it's CIN1, before it advances to higher grade cells, there's so much we can do to help your cervix heal naturally using diet changes, supplements in specific clinical doses of nutrients and herbs and also stress recovery because a lot of the reason why women become susceptible to HPV is because of the effects of stress and all of the imbalances that stress causes in our body. So we need to address these factors to help your body fully recover to fend off the virus. Again, the procedure doesn't kill the virus. So even if you have one leap procedure, it's important to focus on how can we protect you from that virus causing abnormal cells over and over again. And in the doctor's office, they don't have a way to stop the virus from causing recurrent abnormal cells. The way to prevent 
recurrent abnormal cells is to work with me so that I can give you my strategic and proven protocol where I'm seeing I'm able to give the oral dosing of herbs, nutrients, and other natural substances to help your body heal your cervix and fend off the virus. We also use vaginal suppositories of herbs and nutrients and probiotics so that we can heal the vaginal environment to help your natural immunity vaginally protect you from this virus. And what we see is then that on the subsequent pap smear, in a high number of cases, the cells go away, the abnormal cells go away, the virus goes to negative, and then time and time again, as women go back, it stays negative. It's not coming back. And I believe that it's not coming back because I've they now know how to protect themselves. They know how to feed themselves and take care of themselves and which nutrients and herbs to take to help maintain a healthy system that can protect them from the HPV virus. Now, in the situation where maybe you have CIN2 or 3 and you are looking for an alternative to a LEAP or colonization, then I definitely recommend you reach out to me because there's something also called escharotic treatments, which is a traditional herbal and nutrient application to the cervix to remove abnormal cells. I've been trained and using escharotic treatments clinically for really 25 years. And I was trained in a very traditional use of escharotic treatments. And I see a very high success rate. And I do not see damage to the cervix or any other side effects or issues. So to, I just want women to know that if you're concerned about doing a leap or conization, the escharotic treatments are as an effective alternative, but you need to be working with a practitioner who has the training and experience like I have. I can't speak for anyone else who's offering escharotics because I don't know how they're doing them or how how effective they're doing them. But I know from my experience in my clinical practice that we see very a lot of good success with escharotic treatments in being able to have women eliminate abnormal cells, specifically CIN2 and 3, and to get the virus to negative and to prevent it from coming back again. And that's what I'm really interested in women knowing is possible. Did you recently get an abnormal pap smear result and test positive for HPV? Then I'm glad to connect with you. I'm a naturopathic doctor and midwife, and I specialize in helping women to address abnormal pap smears and get HPV to negative. And I would love to invite you to join me for a free online workshop. It's going to be a one day, two and a half hour workshop. I'd love for you to come. And this way I can teach you what your pap results mean and what are the steps you can take to help heal your cervix and get rid of HPV instead of just wait and see if it gets worse. So I look forward to seeing you at the workshop. So then when you are in a situation where you're wanting to get pregnant or maybe you already know you're pregnant, now we're in a different situation, right? And the, the key is, well, in the perspective of wanting to get pregnant, what I would usually say is, better to follow my protocol before you get pregnant because we're able to use a lot of different herbs, nutrients, and vaginal suppositories that we're not going to be able to use during pregnancy. So if at all possible, it's better to address it before pregnancy. And the other reason is that I find that when women follow my protocol to address HPV, we end up improving their fertility. And we very often find that women are able to get pregnant much easier, much faster when they've already gone through the process of addressing everything that was making them susceptible to HPV. We're addressing nutrient deficiencies. We're addressing gut health, vaginal health, hormone levels, neurotransmitter levels. So then, and they're learning how to take better care of themselves so then not only is their body able to fend off HPV, but the ovaries start working better, ovulation improves, hormone levels improve, and their way they've increased their fertility. So my HPV protocol actually ends up improving fertility. And over and over again, I find that this that women are getting pregnant even 
before they realize they're like, oh my gosh, I got pregnant already. And so then we shift their protocol to a pregnancy protocol because what's important during pregnancy is there's certain herbs and nutrients and other substances that we're not going to be able to use during pregnancy because we don't want to expose the baby, right? And so we need to completely shift your protocol. Now, it's not that you can't do anything. And this is what I want to make sure you know is it's not that you can't do anything while pregnant and breastfeeding. There's absolutely still some nutrients and homeopathic remedies and other approaches we can use, dietary changes, for example, gut healing. There's a lot we can do to help fend off HPV even during pregnancy and during breastfeeding. But it's very important to work with a practitioner like me who has the training and experience to understand what are these safe and effective approaches during pregnancy and breastfeeding so that you're, you're, it's helping you and it's even benefiting the baby. Um, because there's also now research to show that in 11% of pregnancies, HPV can be passed to the baby. And so if, you, if you're pregnant and then find out you have HPV or you know you have HPV and then get pregnant, I would say it's worth it to be optimizing your nutrients, your diet, your any other approaches we can use during pregnancy to help decrease the viral load of HPV so that you're decreasing the likelihood of it transmitting to your baby. Because when HPV goes to the child, it can increase their risk of health issues. And so it's better if we can prevent it. And also, we want to, of course, prevent the virus from causing abnormal cells on your cervix during pregnancy because a lot of times women are waiting, waiting, waiting during pregnancy and the doctor's saying there's nothing they can do. And yet, there, from my perspective, there's a lot we can do. So with my patients, we're preventing abnormal cells, we're preventing advancement of abnormal cells, and we're even getting HPV to negative by the time they get to the end of the pregnancy and we retest we see improvements, we see negative HPV happening. And from there, being also able to have healthier pregnant women, healthier moms, healthier babies all around, it's a win-win to be able to support women through this process, to support families through this process is one of the most rewarding things I get to do is to help women feel empowered about the ways that they can support their health and support their future using natural substances that when used in the right way at the right time do not have side effects or withdrawal symptoms or damage to your body. These actually, with the information and knowledge I have, being able to help women and through this process to the other side where they now have a healthy body and a healthy baby and a very um, future that they're looking forward to. So I want for you to know that as well. And to hear some of the stories and read the notes from these women, please visit my website at drdonnie.com. You can also visit and join me for the Heal HPV online workshop that I offer, where I also share stories of women who worked with me through this process, because I, I want for you to hear it directly from them about how they were able to that this is doable, it's achievable, and it's actually changing lives. And I that's why I'm here to share about it, to say if you're in a place where you're worried about what you can do and how to protect your body and how to protect your future, then please reach out. I'm happy to help guide you either by working with me one-on-one -on -one or through working with me in one of my online programs where you can get access to my protocol and my my trainings, including related to fertility, pregnancy, and breastfeeding. And so I really hope that this inspires all of you to know that healing is possible, including during the fertility and pregnancy years of your life. And I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode of How Humans Heal. Thanks for listening to How Humans Heal. If you liked this episode, leave a rating and a review. And for more resources, visit drdonnie.com.